Hi, I'm Peter Hall. I'm Chief Economist and Vice President at Export Development Canada, which is Canada's official export credit agency. Hi, Peter. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Pleasure. Uh, we're going to be speaking about Canada and its clean tech industry. So could you just start by describing Canada's clean tech industry and where we stand relative to other developed economies? No, that's that's a great question, Tim. And thanks so much for having me uh, here today. You know, uh, as Canada's export credit agency, one of the um, key things that we focus on in terms of uh, I guess, undertaking our entire mandate is the clean tech industry. It's very, very important to us. We are an energy producing nation and we do a lot in, in fossil fuels as a nation. And clearly, as the world is moving to wean itself away from these, uh, we, we have turned a lot of our attention toward the clean tech industry. So how does it actually stack up inside of Canada? Well, it's, it adds up to about a $70.5 billion industry when we put it all together. That's a 2019 a statistic. Uh, we wrote a paper on this in 2020, and it itemized quite a few features of, of all of this. That's about 3% of the Canadian economy. So it's, it's not small uh, in terms of its overall stature. Um, the growth, though, is not as high as some would, I guess, and as most would like it to be. You know, it would be great to have a great footprint inside of the economy and to actually be growing quite uh, swiftly. But it grows at a, a rate of about 0.7% a year. Now, that's a fact that uh, comes to us courtesy of Statistics Canada. It's dominated by services. Uh, goods are only about 12% of the entire industry. But what's interesting about this, you know, we are Export Development Canada, so we try to take this industry and export it to the rest of the world. Well, the predominant piece of the export story is actually in that 12% of the industry uh, that is the goods sector, mostly manufacturing of, of uh, you know, the... Uh, out there, sort of leading edge uh, clean tech wares uh, that we see were not good at exporting the services. So that gives you a bit of a broad brush idea of uh, of the footprint of it in uh, in our uh, in our economy. Now, where do we stand relative to other economies? Well, that's where you know we can take a bit of comfort because for the developed world as a whole. Um, Canada is uh, roughly even with the average. So it's about 3% of area-wide uh, GDP when you put the uh, developed economies together. Now, where Canada seems to be excelling at the moment is in its ability to attract investment into leading-edge high-tech companies. So in a survey that was done quite recently, um, only the United States was ahead of Canada with 51% of the companies uh, that uh, were in the clean tech space, uh, highly innovative companies um, attracting that investment. Canada was 11%, and that was number two on the list, uh, ahead of Germany, which was at 10%, and the UK at six, and all other countries fell below that in terms of the number of companies, the percentage of companies that it actually had inside of its own economy that were leading edge, innovative clean tech companies. What do you see as the main challenges that uh, Canada's clean tech companies face, uh, specifically now in this post-pandemic period, but also if you set your gaze a bit farther out, what do you see on the horizon as well? One of the maybe inconvenient truths about the clean tech sector is that it is still quite dependent on government funding. Um, and, you know, nothing wrong with that. That's not that's uh, not. A, uh, a, a statement on policy or what have you in order to get uh, industries going off their feet, um, innovating to the point where they are self-sustaining um, when it is a, a, such an important policy directive. Of course, that of necessity almost has to be a part of the equation. Well, the pandemic period of time has required a lot of fiscal stimulus and so every economy in the developed world and most economies in the emerging world as well uh, have made very significant commitments over a relatively short period of time. And what this has done has increased the debt to GDP ratio of almost every country. Germany is, is a very odd exception to this. 
uh, managing to keep <clears throat> a lid on overall spending. But all of the rest of us have vastly increased our debt burdens. And of course, as interest rates start to rise, that will only be exacerbated. Well, this is putting a pinch on public spending. And that's something that the clean tech sector is really going to have to watch out for. If that source of funding dries up, then what other sources of financing might there be? Well, one could look creatively into the private banking uh, sector and say, well, as, uh, as the private sector is moving more and more away from carbon intensive uh, sources of energy, does that not open up space in their portfolio for funding clean tech? So that's an opportunity, um, but that's for the clean tech sector to go for and to be creative about uh, actually attracting that. I'd say, oh, so fiscal policy is really one of the great uh, areas of danger and sources of funding. But, you know, I guess a second uh, area might be that there's going to be a lot of competition for investment from various sources. The pandemic itself, of course, has created risks inside of global supply chains that now have companies saying, well, I need to nearshore or reshore my supply chains. I've got to relocalize things here because I simply can't bear the risk over the future. So there's a lot of competition for a scarce amount of investment dollars. So the clean tech sector itself is going to be duking it out with very strong demands or requirements for those investment dollars at a time, as I've said before, not to reiterate unnecessarily, that public funding is actually not going to be in as ample supply as it was in the past. Obviously, the the, the challenges are there. You, th you laid them out very well. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to look at the opportunities, though. Um, Export is, is right in your name. It's right. It's it's your wheelhouse. It's what you guys focus on day in, day out. What do you see as Canada's export opportunities uh, in the clean tech sector? And what do you think has to be done now uh, to ensure that we capitalize on those opportunities? Well, that's a that's a very interesting question, Tim. You know, the structure of our clean tech sector here. Uh, by share of category. I said services are a huge part of that. And a, and a reasonably large component of the services is research and development. And one of the difficulties that Canada has, not just in the clean sector, but uh, spanning a number of different industries is we are very good at innovating. We're not good at commercialization. So if the bulk of our clean tech, uh, clean tech exports really are in the manufactured products sector, and you know it, uh, it's a small sector not growing uh, very well, well, is there a way then? You know, part of the problem, the nut that we have to crack here in Canada is: can we actually take that substantial commitment to clean tech research and development? turn that into products that can be commercialized and then feed the export machine with that. So I see that not as a, as a risk or a threat or some kind of deficiency inside of all of this, but as latent potential inside of the sector. It's a question of taking something that we're very good at and taking it to the next level. The second great opportunity is, well, we seem to have a great amount of dynamism uh, inside of um, the services side, and yet we don't export those. So the fact that it's a huge part of our own industry must mean that we're doing something well, but it's very domesticated. And so is there a way of actually shifting gears here and saying, can we take all of that expertise, which we've had to lever inside of an economy that desperately needs it? Surely to goodness, we have some best practices inside of this sort of cluster that we have that would be um, that would be uh, welcomed, let's say, with open arms in much of the rest of the world. So I see, I see these as two great um, economic opportunities inside of the sector. Peter, you've already given me so much already, which I'm really grateful for. So I want to start wrapping it up by giving you a chance to put out some calls to action uh, and that would be by asking you what you think has to be done now and by who uh, to strengthen in general uh, Canada's clean tech industry while uh, focusing on our economic recovery post-COVID. 
It's a super question. One of the great um, eye openers, I guess, about some of the recent crises that we have had in the world. So let's let's rewind back to the global financial and economic crisis of 2008 and 2009. And, you know, one of the key phrases at that point was, well, don't waste a good crisis. And in, in a lot of ways, that was not a wasted crisis because there was a need for a great amount of stimulus inside of the economy to keep the financial sector from collapsing around itself. And one of the things that occurred there um, that I think turned the page for the clean tech sector was that as funds were earmarked for stimulus, there was a recognition around the world that a substantial portion of this could actually be devoted to clean tech industries, to cleaning up our environmental messes, to make sure that we were far more economically and ecologically sustainable as we go forward. And so that, that was a great gift, let's say. The recession was a great gift to the environmental industry at the time. The same is true about the pandemic. You know, once again, as stimulus funds have come into the economy, it's enabled governments to earmark uh, substantial portions of those funds to cleaning uh, up our planet. And of course, that's created momentum for things like COP26 and uh, the work that Mark Carney and others are doing uh, to bring the financial sector around to channeling its funding in uh, in particular ways that are, of course, great benefit to uh, to the clean tech sector. So as we recover, it's in the context of all that momentum having been created. And I don't think that the competing forces are going to dampen that enthusiasm because, of course, there's a tremendous amount of political will around the world to keep things going.